Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I will be sharing with you how I was able to transform this scene into this using just continuous light and my speed light. So before anything else, I'd like to congratulate Tiago Castor for winning this month's giveaway. And if you guys want a chance to win some future giveaways, I highly recommend that you subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so that the moment I announce that video or for a new giveaway, you guys will get notified. So now this video was actually brought about by an Instagram post that I made. I actually showed the final output and some BTS photos with the question on whether or not you guys want me to explain my thought process and basically how I lit this image or how this image came about. Though unfortunately, this shoot did not have a BTS video, but I was able to shoot some BTS photos and I will try my best to be able to explain or guide you step by step on my entire thought process and basically how I lit that image. Okay, so here goes. Let's start off basically with the settings of the camera. I actually shot it at f4, one fifth of a second, ISO 1600, on an A7R Mark II with a 16 to 35 lens. And yes, I shot it at one fifth of a second because I wanted to bring in as much ambient light as I could. Well, I could have brought up my ISO some more since it's a Sony and it's gonna be clean until 6400. But one fifth of a second for me is still, I can actually still hand hold that shot at one fifth of a second. So keeping the ISO lower will always be beneficial for your images. So. This image actually came about as the last, ad, right after the last layout. Prior to this, we shot some sunset photos. And walking back, I actually saw this beautiful tram pass through this building. And the scene just transformed the moment those ambient lights were turned on. So what I requested for was for them to bring the tram back as what you are seeing now. So this is how the scene initially looked like. Now, as you can see, my white balance in this behind the scene image here was set for the tungsten light, therefore it made the sky bluer. But as I said in so many previous videos, white balance is subjective. And basically for the scene that I wanted to create here, I wanted to capture the natural color of the ambient light, which was really tungsten. So I set my white balance to depict that. Now. The problem that I saw here immediately was the fact that the tram didn't have any light in it. Oh, by the way, this was shot in Las Casas, Filipinas de Acosar in Bataan in the Philippines. It's basically a heritage town. What the owner did was he took a lot of the old houses in old Manila and rebuilt it in this area. So he got houses from all over the Philippines and put it into this really iconic spot. It's beautiful. If you guys ever visit the Philippines, I suggest you actually check it out. So. Now here you could see the tram had no light. So basically what I needed to do was create the scene as if this tram was really in operation. The first thing that I wanted to do was put light inside and make this headlight operational. So how did I do that? I got this one. This is an old light that I've had and actually I don't even use it anymore but before the onset of all this beautiful LED lights that are coming out now, this was one of the first. So this light actually comes daylight balance but it also has a cover that makes it tungsten which was perfect for the scene. So I use this light and I put it inside here to be able to illuminate the inside of the tram. Now so the moment that I was able to do that, I was like okay so what's next? the headlights. So now the headlights were a bit tricky because of the size of the headlights that I wanted to mimic and the fact that there was really no place for me to be able to mount my flash. So I came up with an idea. So I had a flash very similar to this one and in order for me to get the same color because it's very essential whenever you're doing lighting like this is that you have to be able to make sure that all your lights color will match. So I had here, this was pre-Magmod era, I had here a CTO filter 
that you could just buy in most photography shops and you cut them up. So I would cut them up into small pieces and tape it in front, therefore changing the color temperature of my flash. And I would mount it using gaffer tape. Now this tape is really just a cloth tape, but it's called gaffer tape because of all those, uh, because of the term gaffer. In other words, an assistant in a set and they would always use tape like this to mend things. In other words, if something breaks down, if they need to connect something, it's that it's like your do-it-all tape. So that's why this is called the gaffer tape. So what I did was I taped uh, the gel filter here and I taped it on the area where I wanted the headlight to come from, such as the picture that you're seeing now. Now, with that out of the way, I now had another flash unit like this one mounted on the Photix Cerberus. So this is a flash mount that allows me to attach a modifier with a Bowens mount in order to make my light softer. Now, one of the reasons why I like shooting with speed lights also, especially now with a mag mod system, I can just slap on my gel filter anytime. But during the time that I shot this, I had another cutout from this one and I put it here. Then I had it in the Photix Cerberus. In other words, the light that was coming out from my softbox was also tungsten or CTO orange. So therefore, I had all my lights basically in the same color temperature. So that is the most important thing. That's how I was able to get this image. You see the light here and the light here and the light coming from the side on the right side, which was modified, I think, with about a 120 cm octabank. They were all color corrected to match the existing ambient light. Now, here's another thing that I already saw while I was shooting it. You saw this area here. There are so many distractions like this one, this dead tree here, and a light bulb was dead. So the composition, aside from really framing her and putting all those leading lines to direct your eye towards her, I also made sure that those areas in which I saw to be distractions or trash in the image, I knew I could easily Photoshop out, like the stump, the tree that was here, the light that was here. So I made sure that the subject did not cover any of those elements that I wanted to remove so that it's easy for me to be able to remove it in post. Okay? So here's the scene again, and basically just to recap everything, I had the tram put in this particular area so that I can put my subject here in order for me to miss out this area and this area so that it's easier for me to Photoshop it out. I shot it at one fifth of a second at ISO 1600 so that I can bring more ambient light in. I set my white balance to depict the existing ambient light, which was tungsten. I had a continuous light inside the cart to be able to illuminate this area. I had, which was also CTO gelled. I had a flash here to mimic that of a headlight, which was also CTO gel and held in place using gaffer tape. I had one light here on the side on a Photic Cerberus also gelled to be able to match the existing ambient light. And I think it was shot with a 120 cm octabank. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it answered your questions on how I was able to transform that scene using my continuous light and flash. But if it didn't, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below and I will make sure to answer them. And please don't forget, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and click that notification bell while you're at it so that you get notified every time I upload new tutorials, which I do every three to five days. And when I announce another giveaway, you guys will be notified too. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, so till the next video.